Good morning, and welcome to Morning Walk, where we discuss our walk of faith. Well, a very important part of our Christian faith is the theology of our faith. And one of the most significant aspects of Christian theology is the incarnation of Jesus Christ. But what's the significance of the incarnation of Jesus Christ? Well, the Gospel of John records, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then down in verse 14, it says, and the Word became flesh. Well, if you haven't figured it out by now, the Word is a person. His name is Jesus. And both Matthew and Luke explain that Jesus, obviously the Son of God, became a human being in the form of a baby in Bethlehem. He didn't come as a conquering warrior as the Jews had hoped he would come, but he came as an infant born in a manger. Uh, animal stable <laughs> and you got to recognize who this baby Jesus was he was the pre-existent son of God and the scripture reminds us that he did not consider himself or his position as the son of God something that he had to assert or to hold on to or to possess. In fact, Scripture goes on to tell us that he emptied himself. That is, he laid aside his privileged prerogative to function independently as God, because God does function independently. He's not dependent on anything or anyone. And he laid this, that aside. And in fact, he took the form of a submissive bond servant. Amazing. And we go on to read in Philippians that he, he was made in the likeness of man. And as a result, he was willing to be dependent upon God the Father and derive all that he did from the indwelling presence of the Father in faithful obedience to whatever the Father was doing in him and wanting to express through him. And so we see that in the incarnation that Jesus remained fully God, he never ceased to be God, and yet he became fully human. And as the God-man, he would then reconcile this fractured relationship between God and man. The one who could take the death consequences of us as men, our rejection of God, so he could take those consequences, the fact that he was a man, uh, because obviously God can't die. And yet, as God, he could forgive mankind because man had rejected God. So the offense was against God. So God would be the one that would forgive man. And yet God could not die. So a man would have to die in our place in order for the penalty of sin to be taken care of. In order to ultimately restore. So it had to be, Jesus had to be God because ultimately he would have to restore God's spiritual life into us as human beings because our greatest need was we lacked spiritual life. And so the Son of God becoming a human being, that's called the incarnation. And his incarnation allows us to be men and women as God intended men and women to be. 
or as we say on this channel, life as God intended man to be. So the incarnation is what we might call the infleshing, the infleshing in human form of God in a man, Jesus Christ. And that man, Jesus Christ, to function as a human individual because no one functioned the way God had intended man to function. And so he would demonstrate then how humanity was intended to live or to operate or to function. And so what we see in the incarnation is Jesus was fully God and fully man, never less than God and never more than man during his ministry as Redeemer and Savior on the earth. Okay, so as the God-man, Jesus functioned as the one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. We see that in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5. So what's, what's the, the conclusion or the capstone of this understanding, the incarnation? It's this. Only the God-man could serve as such a mediating and reconciling liaison between God and us, between God and man. Since, as already stated, God cannot die, only a man could serve as such a mediating and reconciling liaison between God and man, since, since he can't die. And only a man could serve as the vicarious substitute who could take the death consequences that occurred uh, in the human race by the fact that Adam and Eve, on our behalf, rejected God's life back in the Garden of Eden. And only God could forgive such a transgression because the transgression obviously was against his character. So only God could forgive that transgression that had occurred back in the garden. And only God could restore his divine life back to humanity to replace the satanic death presence that we inherited as a part of the human race and were functioning dependent upon that had occupied our human spirit and why we had to be crucified with Christ. And so in conclusion, the significance of the incarnation is the fact that it required the God man, the God man, Jesus Christ, the mediator in the unique person and work of Jesus Christ to restore you and I to life as God intended. That's the beauty of the incarnation. And if you're a Christian this morning and you have his indwelling life, the only question is, are you participating with him and allowing him to express his functional life through you. It's a walk of faith.